What's going on, people? And this is Jay Ghost, and this is going to be one of those big videos that I do in terms of feminism and gaming. But my problem is, I mean, Anita Sarkeesian still isn't relevant, but the problem is that when we sit here and talk about feminism and gaming, no one really understands the logic that is used. Now, this is going to be talking about the rat femme slash social justice warrior crowd, which has come up, and all they really are, if you really think about it, are social conservatives. But we give them the name rat feminist, and then sit here and say, you know, it's the liberal thing to do, or they're hipsters, Puritan hipsters, and everything. They are essentially trying to suppress women's rights by saying that the men do it. And we've known this for a long time. And for the most part, I think people unconsciously kind of understand what they're trying to do. But the thing is, people have already done it. They've done it well. And when you get the Anita Sarkeesians, the Adria Richards, and all of these other people that really don't know what in the hell they're talking about, to fight for females in video games as if there's a problem with it, they aren't really coming into this with anything more than their own agenda. So I want to sit here and I want to focus specifically on their arguments. What are you expecting? What can you expect from a lot of these people that sit here and say, well, we support feminism or we support these women's rights, whether it's digital or in the real life. And are they really helping when they have these problems just to their arguments which everyone is already starting to recognize but I think you know instead of indoctrination we need inoculation so let me go ahead let me tell you what my list is and then you all can sit here and write me or do anything you want sit here and tell me if I'm right wrong ugly otherwise that's why the comments are always open number one gender bias now Anybody that has been paying attention to the whole feminism thing realizes that in any form of entertainment, there is a strong gender bias against strong strong females as well as weak men. Um, the exact dichotomy of that, you know, I don't know of any weak guys off the top of my head except maybe, you know, Leisure Suit Larry or... What was that other guy? Nerd, like, you know, nerdish people or people that are bumpkins, those types of people in video games or anything. They're ignored and dismissed along with the strong female, which are the Laura Crafts, even though her reboot is god awful. And I mean, there's plenty like the female protagonists that you can pick up, decide to play. Like, for example, I decide to um, pick up. A strong female boss in Saints Row 3. Now Saints Row 4 I didn't really play because it's just not my cup of tea. I didn't like Crackdown and to me the pacing was all off so I never picked that game up. But in, in terms of talking about a gender bias we see this kind of role where they go into a very strong gender role of some sort. The men are strong, the women are seen as weak, and even though no other game may see the same thing, that's exactly what is going through with the gender bias. That's what you can expect from any quote-unquote feminist argument that is being made from the new social justice, social conservative type feminists. Number two, patriarchy. Now, this is a theory of a gendered hierarchy. What that gender hierarchy is, is that men are on top and everybody has to believe that men are on top for this to succeed. It kind of falls apart when you sit here and point out things such as, you know, family courts and etc. Or you sit here and point out that, you know, certain types of minority men don't really have as much power as people seem to say they do. It kind of comes out to who has your privilege. That's why people sit here and go crazy about this check your privilege kind of crap 
And that really doesn't help anybody or it doesn't help the conversation move forward. It's kind of goes back into oppression Olympics. The person that has the most special minority groups formed around them, they have more power, they have more privilege than anybody else. That's why the patriarchy theory kind of falls flat. It is a decent theory, but it doesn't really come out in practice. I mean, somebody that's German, you know, during 1890s is probably not going to have as many rights as an Irish person. Because, or let me flip that. An Irish person during the potato famine, if that's the 1890s, is not going to have as many rights as a German who was already in America before 1890 in some way, shape, or form. I mean, that's just kind of one of those things that have came through. Number three, men strong, women weak. Um, I talked about, a little bit about this with the gender bias, but men will always be perceived as oppressors, as the aggressors of any initial conflict. This is actually, actually something that comes out in real life, I guess, because guys have more testosterone, I guess. I'm not too sure about this, but I'm not positive how no man can be seen as weak when we already know that men can be seen as weak. And it's something to pay attention to, especially when you get into a feminist argument because all women will be having no agency. And that's going to be something to point out that you have to point out that you the person who is usually writing these types of articles is going to look at women weekly. And that's not from any man doing it. It's just usually that's their own sexism talking, which is number four. Sexism. Now, sexual discrimination. You discriminate based on sex. That's how I take the interpretation of any dictionary form. Sexism does not happen to just women. It also happens to men. Because we are a sexually dimorphic species. And so, with us being, you know, men having a penis, girls having a vagina, or having tits, we have different, different scenarios where sexism is involved. Someone discriminates based on sex. Usually, the person that's discriminating is going to sit here and make some crazy comments about sex that no one else believes. But we sit here and we look at him and it's like, what the hell is this person talking about? They're going crazy and they're going batshit insane. Now, if you really want to look into sexism, um, i probably recommend looking at people that are in the sex industry and listening to their plights. They usually have a very good and very strong opinion about what is sexism, and they're usually pretty accurate. Now, I don't take everything you say with a grain of salt. Don't believe anybody 100%. That's just one of the things that I've pointed out and I've seen. Now, one other thing. Number five, projection. The person that is usually causing the um, sexism in some way, shape, or form is usually projecting their own biases, their own gender bias in some way, shape, or form. Like, for example, Anita sits here and, you know, I've watched the Thunderfoot's videos. She had to drag bodies of females that she desecrated in order to sit here and show that men can do this in a video game. And she assumes that every last player of Hitman is a male, which isn't the case. So, basically, she projects her own sexist views onto the audience and sits here and says, well, it's all the men's fault. And that's really not the case, but if you look at number six, it's a generalization and exaggeration of behavior that no other person believes. Now, for the most part, I'm putting these six as what is going on. So when we talk about generalization, it's like all men do X, all women do Y. There is no cross, there is no boundaries, or there is no nuance to those discussions. Now, it's an exaggeration because most of these behaviors that we pick up, I mean, if you look outside of feminism and outside of gender bias and gender roles and all that other stuff, 
you can probably see that it's really not the case for a lot of people. Now, stories and movies, they have an influence on our lives. But the fact of the matter is, the things that have far more impact on your life is going to be your family as well as your community. Where you were born, where you were raised, how you're raised is going to have a lot more impact on you than, say, a video game and a media, which you may enjoy a great story from Saints Row, but that that's not a necessarily a, an accurate thing to say for most of the people. I mean, most people are not going to be playing that game. For example, my family really doesn't play video games as much as I do. I mean, who am I going to be affected more by? I listen to my father a hell of a lot. I listen to my mother a hell of a lot because I respect their opinion. So when they tell me something, I'm usually going to listen to them over some kind of crazy message that I'm going to get in a video game, which is mainly just about killing people or, you know, running around doing as much mass carnage and mass mayhem as I can do. So you all can take that as you will. Of course, this is always open to commentary, but this is just a way to try to inoculate a few people, influence them to hopefully look at feminism in more of a critical view. I mean, you don't have to sit here and call them feminazis and all that other stuff. If you want to, be my guest. I really don't give a damn. I just don't choose not to do that type of stuff. And I choose to sit here and look at feminism, or at least the third wave, quote unquote, as one of those that has really lost its way because it's sitting here and trying to regress back to the second wave. It's trying to fight battles that we've already fought. And instead, we don't have to go back to the second wave of feminism. We need to be pushing forward. There are plenty of battles that we could be fighting. Now, for me, I do economics. Some people may know that I'm, you know, left-wing anti-capitalist to each their own. But the fact of the matter is, if you look at what is going on, I mean, you can't blame it on patriarchy. You can't blame it on men. I'm not looking to point fingers at women either. I'm just looking to sit here and say, we can do a hell of a lot more. If we want to sit here and focus on making better stories, that should be our focus. If we want to focus on, you know, affecting the real world, Planned Parenthood could use a lot of help. There could be male domestic shelters. There could be better communal inputs about what men want and women want. And we don't have to have this whole gender war that is sitting here dividing our resources and we could be learning about how to sit here and fix you know lesbian couples gay couples all that stuff i think a lot of men women etc are more than open to the idea but this whole gender war debate pretty much kind of kills it so I'll see you all next time. Hopefully you all got something out of this. Hopefully I explained it well. If not, leave a good comment. I'll see you all later.